Welcome to Year 7 Geography. My name is Gabrielle and this is Lesson 2 in our unit on Mapping Skills. This lesson we're learning all about the tools of a geographer. What are the lesson objectives for this lesson? Firstly, to understand the different tools that geographers use, to explain how geography tools are used, and to create a basic mud map of your neighbourhood. A Geographer's Tools, Part 1 A globe A globe is a scale model of the Earth that depicts properties such as area, distance and direction. It has lines of latitude, which are the invisible lines that run horizontally around the Earth, and it also shows the lines of longitude, these are the invisible lines that run vertically around the Earth. A map. A map is a flat representation of all or part of Earth. Unlike globes, maps cannot show all the properties accurately or to scale. Cartographers use mathematical formulas to transfer information from the three-dimensional globe to the two-dimensional map. However, when the curves of a globe become straight or only slightly curved on a map, distortion occurs in shape, distance, area or direction. Let's look at some different map projection types. Firstly, planar projections. So on the left here we have a polar planar projection, projection and an equatorial planar projection. So polar planar projection looks down on the Earth from the North Pole or up uh, under the Earth from the South Pole. An equatorial planar projection looks at the Earth from uh, the equator, from the perspective of the equator, that is in the center of the globe. And this is the most common uh, map projection that you will see. So as I said earlier, when transferring a map from a globe to a flat map, distortion occurs. In a planar projection, only areas near the center point are the correct size and shape. So this is Antarctica. And so Antarctica, because it's directly in the center of um, the, the globe underneath, in the South Pole, uh, it is the correct size and shape. Now these kinds of projections are also known as azimuthal projections. Here is another kind of projection called a cylindrical projection. There are two types. Picture A shows the Mercator projection. This was created by Flemish cartographer Gerardus Mercator in 1569 and it is widely used even today. So this is a kind of map that you would easily recognize is if you had a map of the world on your wall, this is what it would most likely look like. But if you have a look at picture B, this is called the Gaul Peters projection. It was presented in 1974 and it was created to make it easier to understand the relative size of continents. So for example, if you compare Africa on the Mercator projection and compare it with Africa on the Gold Peters projection, you can see that Africa is actually much larger. And this is because Africa really is a very large continent, but we don't really understand that because we're so used to seeing the Mercator projection. But the Gold Peters shows us that relative to other countries, it's actually very large. Same for Australia. Australia is quite a large country doesn't look that large on the Mercator projection, but on the Gaul Peters, it shows its relative size compared to Indonesia and New Zealand. A third type of projection is called the conic projection. This is a map created by projecting an image of Earth onto a cone. So what other tools do geographers use? Well, a compass. A compass is a navigational instrument that shows direction. Long before GPS satellites and other high-tech navigational aids, the compass gave humans an easy and inexpensive way to orient themselves. A compass is an extremely simple device. A magnetic compass consists of a small 
lightweight magnet balanced on a pivot point. The magnet is generally called a needle. One end of the needle is often marked N for north or colored in some way to indicate that it points towards north. So you can see on our compass here, we've got a colored needle to make it easier to see and you've got your red arrow and the red N to indicate north. Now compass rose is what you're more likely to see on a map. A compass rose shows the cardinal directions that we use to describe the location of a place or the direction of travel. North is always at the top. The blue compass rose is the most common one we use in geography. The grey one is very complex and really only used for specialist applications. The next tool, an atlas. An atlas is basically a book of maps. The oldest atlas in the world is the Theatrum Orbis Terrarum, compiled by Abraham Ortelius in 1570. And this one is pictured at the bottom left. Aerial photographs. Aerial photographs are photos of the earth taken from a plane or a weather balloon. Drones are also used, but it depends on the height at which the photo needs to be taken. Aerial photos are good to track changes in the landscape or land use over time. Satellite photographs. Satellite photographs, as the name suggests, are photos of the Earth taken from satellites in space. Satellite photos are good to track changes in landscape or land use over time. They can also track up-to-date weather patterns or natural disasters, and they are also used to track climate change over time. A GIS or Geographic Information System. A GIS is a computer-based tool that geographers use to get detailed maps, charts, data, and graphics about a particular location. GPS, Global Positioning System. There are many different brands, for example, Navman, Garmin, and TomTom, and Magellan. GPS receivers use four satellites to pinpoint your location on Earth, latitude, longitude, altitude, and time. And finally, a mud map. This is not to scale. It only shows where things are in a small area, like your local neighborhood. No key or scale is included on the map. So we're going to watch a short video now on how to draw a neighborhood map because you'll need to understand this in order to draw your own in the next activity.
Okay, so that's just a simple example of how to create a mud map, also called a neighborhood map. So this is an activity that you might like to do just for practice. Why not create your own mud map or neighborhood map of the place where you live? Right, to finish up our lesson today, let's do a quick matching activity. Match the tool with the correct definition. So we've got some different tools that we've learned about in our lesson today in the column on the left. And in the column on the right are some definitions. Now they're all mixed up, so you have to match the correct tool with the correct definition. So take a moment to pause the video now and do this matching activity in your notebook. When you're ready to check your answers, restart the video. Welcome back. Here are the answers to our matching activity. So we can see there that the first tool in our list is a map, and a map is a flat representation of the globe. GPS is short for Global Positioning System. A compass is a device to help you locate north or what direction you are facing. An aerial photograph is a photograph taken from the sky. A GIS is a geographic information system. And an atlas is a book of maps. Well, that brings us to the end of lesson two, the tools of a geographer in our year seven geography unit on mapping skills. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to visit our website, www.voyagerschool.com.au for more valuable courses in more subjects for high school students. See you next time.